I'm going to be talking about how to install Codasys Control SL on a Linux operating system to use uh, Linux as a soft PLC. So first thing we'll need to do is open up the Codasys installer by going to the start menu and then begin typing in Codasys installer and there it is. When that opens up we're going to go to change. We're going to select the, uh, the installation that we want to use, in this case 3.5 Service Pack 19. And then when that opens up, we're going to click on the Browse tab and in the search box begin typing Linux L-I-N-U-X. That gives us a few options uh, for an ARM, ARM64. We're going to choose just the Linux SL. That's for a normal uh, a PC operating system. And we have a version. I'm going to choose the latest version. I click OK, and it's going to install that package. It's going to take a few minutes, and uh, after a minute, we're going to get a thing to accept the terms and conditions, and then continue. And I've sped this up. Uh, this takes, depending on the speed of your computer, uh, 45 seconds or so. And if we go back to the installed items, we can scroll down and there is our code six for Linux for Linux SL that we just installed. And we can jump over to Codasys and click on the tools menu. Uh, you may or may not have the option for update Linux. Uh, if it's not there, you have to add that to the tools menu. So we're going to go to customize and then choose the tools menu and then scroll down. I'm going to just put it next to the there, uh, add command, scroll down to uh, runtime deployment, I think, and then update Linux. Check that. You can check the ARM options if you've installed the, the ARM uh, runtime also. And then confirm that the one used data is there. Click OK. We can go back to the tools menu, and there's update Linux right where we added it. So now I'm going to just create a simple program here, um, use a standard project template. I'll give it a name. I'll just name this uh, Linux. Linux Control SL. And then click OK. And then here we'll choose the PLC. We should have the Linux uh, SL option. There's others there if we installed the ARM or others, but we're going to choose Linux SL. And I like to use a ladder and we'll let it create the project. I'm just going to do a simple uh, a button and a lamp. So I'll add those elements I a contact and I'll name that button. And I'll declare the variable and then I'll add a coil and I'll name that lamp and declare that variable. Now I want to create some visualizations or a visualization to go along with this button and a lamp. Um, so I need to add that to the application. So right click on the application and I want to add a visualization, visualization manager first and just use the, Steve, the default options there and that should add a visualization uh, manager and the web VSU. Um, you can change these options if you'd like. I'm just going to keep all the defaults for now and then I need to add a visualization that will be the start visualization that we'll add here. Um, so again, right click on application, add object, go down to visualization, add new, uh, you can give this a name, I'll call it button and lamp, button underscore lamp, uh, button underscore and underscore lamp, sure. Um, so out of the, the tools, let's just grab a push button. We'll put that over here and we'll grab a lamp and drop it there. The button, we need to assign a variable. And so that's going to be under PLC underscore PRJ dot. And I'll choose button. 
and let's make that a push button instead of a toggle. And let's name the lamp PLC underscore PRJ dot lamp. And let's make that a green lamp. Okay, so now we've got a visualization. Uh, we need to upload it to the PLC. Um, let's oh, let's go ahead and build first. Um, generate code. Make sure there's no errors or warnings. And it looks like I have one warning, and I forgot to add the visualization that we just created to the start visualization in the web VSU. So we'll right click on the web or double click on the web VSU and then just add that visualization as the start visualization. And we'll go to generate code again. This time we should have no errors or warnings and it looks good. So if we try to log in to the PLC, uh, we're not going to be able to because we don't have a PLC defined. Uh, we need to first upload the runtime to our Linux installation. So we'll go to update Linux and we need to have a Linux server already set up or a, it doesn't have to be a Linux server, any Linux installation. I'm using Ubuntu server and I have it just installed with all the basic options. Uh, SSH is the only um, additional module or tool that I have installed and we'll need to enter the SSH username and password here. And then we'll go to the IP address and we can say scan. And I have several devices on my network. This last one here, the dot two, three, four is my, my Ubuntu server. Um, so I'll choose that. Let's uh, jump over to a terminal window uh, this is just Windows PowerShell. You can use PuTTY, you can use whatever you like. Um, and let's sign in on SSH just to verify that none of the CodeAssist files are installed yet. So I'm going to open up PowerShell and SSH CodeAssist at 192.168.1.234. It's going to ask for a password. And we're signed in. So I'm just going to go uh, sudo ls forward slash etc. Um, and so listing the directory, the etc directory, there's just uh, a lot of files, but nothing with the name codasys. So we'll uh, install the runtime and then come back and verify that there's some codasys files there. So going back into codasys, we'll go to install. It's going to take a minute or two. Uh, again, this is all happening over SSH. Uh, no, I didn't have a web server installed, no Apache, no anything else. I haven't configured any ports. I haven't done anything. Again, this is just a generic installation of Ubuntu server. When that's complete, the installation, we get this message. And looks like there's some messages, no errors or warnings. Now let's jump back over to our terminal and do the same thing, sudo ls-etc. And here you can see we have some code control configuration files. So now we can uh, log in. And we're gonna check yes to scan for new devices and move the screen so you can see a little bit better. Um, you can double click on the device and the, the tree on the right also on the left also. Um, we scan for devices. There's nothing found. We need to, um, okay. So here's, here's the device. We'll check that and say, okay. 
Um, we can look, that is the, the Linux SL runtime. And it's going to ask if we want to set up a password. And we'll say yes. And so you can put in a username and password. I'm going to say codasys and a password and re-enter the password and then OK. Now it's going to ask us to sign in. So with the username and password that we just created. And now it's going to ask a second time to sign in. I'm not sure why it does this. I, I think once it's the, the device without an address and the device with an address. I'm not sure exactly. Okay, so now we're ready to log into the PLC. And it says we don't have anything installed. So yes, we want to upload the program that we just created. And that's happening. Okay, so we have no messages. Let's go ahead and start the PLC. And we'll go back to our visualization and when we push the button, the light should come on. Hey, look, it's working. So we can, because we have a web this visualization created, we can open up a browser and navigate to uh, the address of our servo. And the first time it's gonna give us a security uh, notification. We'll just go ahead and accept it. You can see here now we push the button. This is in a web browser and the light comes on when we push the button. Um, let's go ahead and make a change to this. Let's just re relocate those uh, visualization elements just so they fit on the screen in the web view so a little bit better. Um, so we're going to log out and I'm just going to drag those up to the upper left corner and then log back in. I'll download. It seems to work better when I do a download instead of just update without download. Okay, and we'll start the PLC and we'll jump back over to our browser window. And here we are. So you push the button and the light comes on. Now we've created a Codasys program with a Linux runtime and we have a web visu. Again, I didn't do any configuration for the web server. The runtime installation took care of all of that in Linux. I hope this was helpful. Happy coding.